the beautiful screen and we are live hello Stephen. hello graham nice hello, uh your your levels are the right level in uh it, it, both in my ears and in everybody else's ears all right that's you, good news you are coming in our ears <laughs> we, we we are basically 12 years old <laughs> But I, I definitely don't think, you know, I don't feel like I have sort of, uh, you know, changed personally. Like, you know, I've said this before, when people, when I, like, bought my house, I was like, fuck, what are you giving me a mortgage for? Like, you know, why aren't you dealing with adults? That's that's why I didn't get a mortgage, because I'm not an adult. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm going to switch to stream chat. Amiga Gamer 1200 asks, is that class as an orgasm? And says, hello to us and to Matthew. Uh, hello. hello, Amiga Gamer 1200. Hello, Matthew. I guess Matthew is here as well. Hmm. Let's see. I'm not sure if the people that are in the stream chat are necessarily... Oh, it shows that it looks like Greg is online, although he may or may not be on the stream. Are you looking oh. at... Um... I'm looking at Mattermost. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, right. If you're actually looking at Matamos, it might be right. I've got a feeling that IRC isn't right. Oh, okay. Yeah, in Mattermos, it shows all the people who are there, and then it shows green ticks. Okay, right, right, right. You, you and me and Greg and Dan Fulton. Okay, nice. Good. Well, hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, what have you been thinking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the thing that I've been thinking about off and on for a while is about sort of free software. We, we've touched on some of these things on this stream and the other one, but uh, about uh, the, th the way I'm thinking about it is that software licenses are insufficient to guarantee our freedom. Okay, right. Um, because we have free software. We have, I definitely said on one of the two streams that uh, I think there's more free software on, an, on a bone stock iPhone than there is on a bone stock Android phone. And there's probably more on both of those than there is on your stock Windows PC. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I mean, yeah. that isn't to say there isn't free software. We know that um, back in the day, uh, Microsoft took the networking stack from uh, BSD and incorporated yep. it into Windows NT. They probably have rewritten it since then. Uh, but, you know, so Windows is not like completely devoid of free software. Uh, and indeed, Edge is now um, Blink-based, isn't it? Uh, Chromium-based. Um, yeah, yep. But yeah, yes. and, and, and so I, we, we have free software for everything we want. We have free software for, um, uh, for anything you want to do with a computer can be done with free software these mm -hmm. days. Um, anything you need to do with a computer can be done with free software. And the problem is that we've moved to closed platforms that are built upon free software. And so, you know, the future is not distributed evenly. Right. We, have, we have this wonderful free software utopia that we dreamed about in the late 90s. Um, and, and for some people, even longer than that. Hmm. But, we, but we have, in a lot of ways, less freedom than we used to have. Right, indeed. So we have... Uh, we, so, there, there, I have a couple of questions. I'm going to tease them apart. I'm going to start with the first one. <clears throat> Which of the four freedoms do we have in this sort of glorious, you know, free software utopia? So, in in software land, I think we we have or we can have all of the four freedoms. Mm -hmm. in 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 theory in practice we basically have zero of them um mm -hmm. we uh i have um if i if i get a if i get a bone stock mobile well and, and i think it's partly because computing has changed most mm -hmm. people's main computer is their phone that's not necessarily true for me even though maybe it ought to be true for me but i resist it i <laughs> i my, for me my computer is my main computer and the phone is is an accessory yeah in uh, fact that's even evident in 
the fact that you call one of them a computer one of them a phone but i think everyone does right yeah uh, nobody calls yeah, a phone absolutely. a computer anyway yeah sorry Karen. and so i have uh um i because i pay apple a hundred dollars a year or whatever it is i have the freedom to run any program for any purpose on my iphone mm -hmm. Because I can install software randomly on my iPhone. But anyone who's not a member of the Apple Developer Program cannot install whatever software they want on their phone. They can only install software that Apple lets them. Yeah. And, and there's even limits to what I can do with my own iPhone that I own uh, in terms of what, software I, uh, what the software I put on it can do. But I think those are possibly less important. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, the freedom to study, we actually, we definitely have freedom. So we, we, we don't really have freedom zero. Most computers that we get, uh, most computers that we interact with, the ones in our cars, the ones in, in our, in our phones, um, and so on. In my we, light bulbs. We, in your light bulbs. Uh, we, we have the freedom to use those things as for any purpose. Freedom one, um, the freedom to study how it works and change it is a freedom that is m in Western countries, at least is limited by the DMCA and the WIPO treaties and so on. So we don't, we don't really have freedom one at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the freedom to redistribute. We also don't really have that freedom. Uh, although, if we if we got free software, then we have that freedom with software, but we don't have that freedom. The problem isn't the software anymore. It's the thing that the software runs on. Um, right. And that that is not just, yeah, I mean, you're talking about sort of smart devices to some extent, like, um, you know, cars and light bulbs and whatnot, and, yeah, and even yeah. smartphones, but also soft like what is called software as a service and i've been calling um software rental is yep. uh means that you're not running the software on your computer you're running the browser and so you know even if you had a like you know, this computer in front of me it's fully free desktop i've got g workspace window maker firefox as soon as i connect to gmail i'm using a fully free desktop but i still haven't won the battle Exactly. And so two, two, I think two important things have happened in the last, uh, in the last 15 years or so. One of them is that, is that the computers, uh, basically the desktop computer, I, the idea of the desktop computer was, was realized. We, we have, we have desktop computers and we can build them from parts and, you know, and, and we have a lot of freedom there, you know, firmware blobs and stuff, notwithstanding. And but you, yeah, you know, in, in fairness, that's we like the the experts. Yeah, you know, most people who buy a desktop computer are going to get a Windows, Chrome OS, or Mac OS. Absolutely, yeah. And so we we have a lot of those freedoms, which are being eroded slowly. But but on on your phone and in your car and your light bulbs, which I think are more important things. We don't have any of that stuff. When you when you buy a car, um, a friend of mine bought a Mercedes a few years ago, and he he sent a picture of the. I don't have the picture anymore. He sent a picture of the. He pulled the user manual out of the box and he found that it had a DVD ROM in it. Mm -hmm. uh, a DVD, and the DVD was all of the source code, all of the copyleft source code that was used in the firmware for the car. So he got the source code to the version of Linux that his car runs. Uh, and all of the stuff that they were required to release the source code to. Mm. But he couldn't then rebuild a new firmware for his car. Right. Because right. he's missing a whole bunch of stuff. But even if he had all of that, would he be able to do that kind of thing? Uh, the best example that I can think of this is the Sony PlayStation. Mm. The Sony PlayStation is built on nearly 100% free software. It's free BSD. Yeah. Uh, Sony has even been quite good, as I understand it, about releasing like the graphics drivers. The reason FreeBSD has graphics drivers for GPUs mm. is because Sony worked on those. Okay. Um, and the only thing on your PlayStation that you don't have the source code to uh, is the game loader and the the user interface. Mm. You've got like, uh, you know, if we want to talk about a completely ridiculous uh, measure. If you want to talk about lines of code, 
you probably have the source available to you for about 90, let's, you know, pull a number out of my ass and say 95% of the lines of code that run on your PlayStation. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you can do anything with it. Mm. You can't, your your plate, because your PlayStation is not considered a general purpose computer. Yeah. Now we used to, sorry, carry on. I, I, I was going to slightly change the subject. We used to, we used to, and even Richard Stallman does this. We used to make exceptions in free software ideology for video games, mm-hmm. um, because video games are largely content; they're not actually software. And we, and that was less true than then. It's very true now because all the games use the same five graphics engines, which are open source typically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, and the content is encumbered, so you can go and download the source code to the Quake engine but you have to recreate all the content. And it turns out that's where all the work is in, mm-hmm. in, in Quake. Um, and, uh, and id Software has been actually a, 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 really good, um, a really good citizen that way. They, after, after a game goes EOL, they release the source code under the GPL and say, do what you want with it. And we have a lot of great free software games as a result. Mm. But in my day-to-day life, and forgetting for a moment the, the the few apps on my phone that are required by sort of being a member of society in my day to day life, I don't have a lot of control over the uh, over the stuff I'm running, mm. um, and I and I don't have the ability to run what I want. You have to go through uh, when when I was looking for uh, I'm at the house up north, and when I was looking for a networking solution for the house for the house up north. I thought, okay, I want to do this the fully freeway. Hmm. Do you know how fucking hard it is to get networking equipment that you have the source code to, even if you're willing to flash firmwares? Right, because it used to be that like the Open WRT was sort of the gold standard, and in fact, it was better than the the manufactured hardware and software, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I used an Open WRT router until I think the 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 next iteration of wi-fi which isn't supported by any of the open source Mm. cards um the other thing too is um as i understand it i have some deeper knowledge of this than most but not as deep as many uh as i understand it it is actually impossible under eu law for source code to 5g modem drivers to be released right so 5G is an entirely, uh, which since you're fully vaccinated, you have excellent 5G coverage and you'll never get the source code mm. to it. Um, because I'm in, not in the EU, I'm presumably allowed to opt out of GSM networking. Or rather the government is. <laughs> right. And so, and so what, what ended up happening was we, we won the, what we thought was the war. Uh, you know, we, we thought that when all of the source code is available and it's not, it's even better than it used to be. It used to be, we used to have the argument with people in, in the late nineties when I was doing sort of free software and Linux advocacy, Hmm. people used to say, well, I'm not, I'm not a programmer. I don't give a shit if I have the source code. And I said, yeah, but you're not a car mechanic either, but you wouldn't buy a car with the hood nailed shut. Yeah. Except now people are buying cars with the hood nailed shut. Um, when you buy an electric car, the, the hood is effectively nailed shut because an electric motor is not that interesting. Mm. Um, we've been making those for longer than we've been making cars. Yeah, I mean, pe- petrol cars pre... Uh, sorry, electric cars predate petrol cars. Uh, yeah. By a very small amount of time, but they do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, so that leads me to ask the second of the questions I had earlier, which is, like, so what... It, you know, it, is it there? There are two ways to look at this, and uh, one one is that um, we have a load of free software and we don't have the four freedoms. Now, of course, it's only actually copy left that mandatorily protects those four freedoms. I'm thinking out loud, but I think that's true. That you, uh, yeah, yeah. That you know, you, so you can have a load of free software in that you have a uh, software whose license permits redistribution. But if it doesn't require the receiver to permit redistribution, then all you have to do is go into business with someone who doesn't want to share the software and you, you have effectively closed the mm-hmm. software. Um, but so like the, so my question is, is it that we, 
have all of the free software and we don't have those four freedoms? Or is it that there are other like attributes to a sort of, you know, an ideal or a working or you know, whatever, however you want to define it, the, the, the better digital society that you perceive? Are there other attributes to it that aren't covered by those four freedoms? And even if we had copyleft software everywhere, we still wouldn't be free. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the interesting, the, uh, the, the software I think is sort of a one game, but Hmm. they change playing fields on us. And so now the playing field is in, uh, network effects. Uh, some of you are watching this stream on Twitch, uh, because we aren't looking, well, I think we would like for this to be our full-time job, I think. But because we're not looking to get rich from running this and the other stream, it, uh, you know, we we can do a thing where we where where, where you you've set up the the video hosting elsewhere and stuff, and not all of our viewers come in through Twitch. Hmm. But most people who are on Twitch don't have that option, and not just because they don't have the technical skills, because nobody would find them. It's the same thing as. Um, when you know when when you want to start an online video anything you have to go to YouTube because YouTube is where the viewers are and so you wind up beholden to the services and so the two things that happened were computers aren't computers anymore as we generally think of them and also that we've we've centralized around computer systems that we don't that we don't own uh i would be very surprised if there's anything in youtube that is actually closed source other than you know the the what you know what they now call the front end Hmm. and the Um, the algorithm yeah yeah capital Uh, a the algorithm (laughs) right and so so the algorithm and the ui are probably are a very small percentage of the software that makes up youtube but you and I just can't start a YouTube competitor because of network effects. And so, um, and that, that is a problem that we can solve. Theoretically, we can solve the, these devices are closed and you're not allowed to fix them hmm. with a uh, right to repair legislation. But we, I can't think of any reasonable re- legislation that would enable us to sort of you know undo youtube's stranglehold on video online video yeah it's interesting i mean because like we previously had i'm thinking kind of up till about actually not that long ago like probably around 2010 was when this finally finished we had this kind of succession of monopolies replacing monopolies Mm -hmm. um so you know we're like facebook has been the dominant social network not forever but since like probably about 2008 um and it replaced like myspace myspace replaced what was it called friendster um and you know and then like reddit has replaced uh, Google Groups, which replaced Yahoo Groups, which replaced Usenet, um, and you know I could come up with other examples. YouTube is an outlier because the technology to do, uh, uh, you know, in terms of like bandwidth and storage and uh, you know encoding capacity and everything, means that we didn't have like the capacity to do a central video service before YouTube. Right, you know, it is the first of that monopoly um it's a, it's a first general first generation monopolist yeah well it yeah it, it is the first generation in its technology sector but yeah. it it is the final generation in terms of like the the sort of business model and mm-hmm. what like i mean what basically seems to have happened whoops is money uh is that there's enough um yeah there there, there was enough uh like venture capital from the likes of uh, who was it at the time, like uh, Kleiner Perkins, Sequoia Capital, Sun Microsystems, 
Um, there were probably other companies involved um, at the time to just go, right, go and buy your marketing, your social network. You know, Here's tens of millions of dollars to become the number one thing and then we'll work out how to put the business model on top of it. And yep. that is now actually no longer true in that there is now so much money that you can have multiple competitors entering the same space. So like, you know, Dropbox have not managed to become the monopoly on uh, file sharing, even though that is like an evident sort of network effect um, collaborative platform because um, you know, companies like WeTransfer, because the other companies like Microsoft and Apple can just go, oh, that that's a thing, is it? We'll, we'll you know, put as much money as they've got onto it but also like you know uber who have been given billions and billions of dollars uh are still competing with lyft because they've also been given billions and billions of dollars so and oftentimes by the same people oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so it's uh, it, yeah so so we're, there, there was that kind of unique uh little period uh but very influential little period where like you know google became dominant in uh, search and had enough money to buy YouTube. Like YouTube was an independent company, and Google Video was shockingly bad. Um, they didn't manage to make Google Code uh, the main thing, but GitHub did, and so like Microsoft bought them. Um, you know, you have like Facebook for uh, social networks. You have Reddit for uh, essentially like all discussion forums, um, and so you have to put. Like, so so if you want to kind of replace one of those things, you have to put put massive amounts of resources in, so much so that they that they can see you doing it and then just pay to have that happen faster uh, or to buy out the one that looks like he's winning. Like, uh, you know, so we, we could also talk about the fact that we used to have Flickr for photos and then we got Instagram and then Facebook bought Instagram because that was quicker than... Like improving the photo sharing on Facebook, um, mm -hmm. but you you could uh, build out, and this is the discussion I have inside the university. Because so there was um, there's this group. There used to be a group inside Oxford University run by IT services um, called uh, Oswatch OSS Watch. And they were supposed to be, I mean, they were basically an open source advocacy group, but their thing was neutral evaluations. So, you know, they, like, if you were uh, about to roll out a like MATLAB solution uh, to a group, they could come along and say, here is how MATLAB compares with Octave, you know, with GNU Octave. They couldn't, they wouldn't say, you should use GNU Octave, Yahoo, like GPL wins, Microsoft sucks, or um, they, they would say, like, you know, hey, please compare these two things and come to your own conclusion. Uh, yeah. That that kind of went by the wayside a long time ago. And there's a recent thing called Oxfos, which is basically a little sort of internal discussion advocacy group. And um, one of the people on that wanted to replace, like, the IT services Microsoft installation with a collection of free software things. So, yeah, it was, building up this case for like we can use element chat or matrix for um instead of teams and we can use like next cloud instead of um like sharepoint and onedrive and we can use uh whatever like jitsi or whatever instead of um teams video chat and so on and so on um and a discussion i had with that person was like you don't need like that is actually the hardest problem in the university to solve is like telling central IT who support everybody in the university to change everybody's setup. But you mm -hmm. can go but because this thing is like is such a decentralized or uh, organism, you can go to like one research group and say, You should publish the source code for your your data analysis software that you wrote. Yeah, you know, and that and that's like an easy win. And it doesn't get you much of a win, but it gets you like one more package and one more group who are now familiar with the idea of open source, what they get from it, who can then 
like you know, replicate that and then to help their community and their network to replicate that. And you can kind of build this this snowball effect. So I'm wondering whether like uh you know w- whether it is, and we've we've had this discussion before and i think kind of came to the same conclusion we shouldn't be disappointed well okay we can be disappointed that like everybody is on facebook but we shouldn't be trying to like build the thing that gets everybody off facebook we should be trying to build the thing that gets 50 people off facebook mm-hmm. and then like yeah, and then they've just got an, an alternative and maybe they've got a group where like 45 of them are the same and five other people and mm-hmm. the 45 go, hey, we should use, you know, GNU face or whatever it's called. And like, you know, and, and we should use this for our community and then like snowball it out from there. Because we're never yeah. going to compete on resources or on like, you know, global marketing. We're never going to get like the two billion people who aren't on Facebook onto the non-Facebook platform. Right. This is one of the things that I'm in our discussion today. We talked about, you know, you know, sort of what what can we do next type mm. thing. Um, I I have a Facebook account again, and I have a Facebook account because uh, for two reasons. One was because there were some Amiga communities that I wanted mm. to be involved in, that are on Facebook, and the other one, and this was this was the tipping point for me, is there is a local. Uh, in this area of Sweden that I live in, the region is called uh, Anunfu. And in this region, there is kind of like a farmer's market, but it's an online farmer's market where you go in and, and somebody says, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I, I've, I've sent six pigs to the abattoir, send in your meat orders by Facebook Messenger. Mm. I will and I will meet you at the place at the designated time every week and give you your bacon. And right. that is a is a community that only exists on Facebook and because everyone in this region has Facebook. I have an 86-year-old neighbor who says who doesn't speak English and he says he can't use a computer because they're too complicated for him. Hmm. I talk to him on Facebook because he uses Facebook from his phone. Right. Uh, right. He, he has an iPhone with Facebook on it and he uses it just fine. And I said, computers are way simpler than this thing that you're doing on your phone. Mm. Uh, and he said, but I do everything on my phone. The only thing I wish was that the screen was bigger. Well, he doesn't actually need a phone. Fo- he needs an iPad, not a yeah, computer. Yeah. Um, and, and so, and, and so I'm not trying to get my 86 year old neighbor to get his first computer. Mm. Um, but he's on, he's on Facebook. Everyone is on Facebook for you know and if you want to be part of this farmer's market thing you kind of have to be on facebook because it only exists on facebook and so one of the small ways that i want to improve the local life is say look we're going to take this thing that you're doing only on facebook and let's i and and i will support it and there are a couple of other local people who can support it and let's build a community of uh, so the rules in this group are that you can sell whatever you want, but you have to have made it yourself. Mm. And it's mostly food from farmers. Uh, when I want to buy hay bales, I go on there and say, hey, I'm looking for hay bales. And some farmer comes up and will tell me, hey, I have hay bales. I'll meet you at, you know, at at the place because there's a weekly meetup where people do the yeah. exchange. Uh, and if I want to, if I want to make, you know, coasters out of leather and sell those i can do that using the facebook group but what if that wasn't limited only to facebook Hmm. there i suspect there are a whole bunch of other people local to me now who also only have a facebook group so that they can buy locally produced products um and i think that that might be a small sort of dent that I can put in Facebook is, you know, as you say, to get 50 people off of Facebook. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, there's, there's like a whole sort of, um, ecosystem there where like you, you could, you could evidently build a, you know, a website or a mobile app or whatever the user interface is, that is more geared towards the, um, you know, pro- producing and exchanging, uh, sort of small scale locally manufactured stuff than Facebook because yeah. Facebook are never going to focus on that market. 
Um, yeah, right right now it's Facebook comments. Somebody mm. writes, I have these things to sell, and you comment on the post, I would like mm. three packs of bacon and I would like, you know, one pack of pork chops. And then that person shows up and opens Facebook on their phone and looks at your name and looks at what you've ordered. Yeah. Um, we can definitely build a better solution for that. Those things, and, and it wouldn't be difficult to build that better solution because those better solutions already work. Mm-hmm. And by doing that here, I'm getting people one, I, I can get in, in a very, and we're talking about a very rural community in the, mm-hmm. in the entire region of Anantra, there's only like 15,000 people. Um, by doing that, I can help some people have one less tie to Facebook and also, I can then build software that helps people in other similar communities. Mm. And I come because I like to live rurally, every community I've ever lived in has had a marketplace like this of locally produced goods, of art and, yeah. and, and food and so on. And so maybe I get, you know, 20 people off of Facebook here, but I get 100 people off of Facebook in the community uh, that I used to live in in Canada, mm. and so on. So maybe maybe those are the levels of activism that we need to start doing instead of arguing over, you know, whether something is GPL licensed or BSD licensed or whatever, because I, I can tell you there are zero people uh, within a rounding error, uh, zero people in the I buy locally produced food from the Facebook marketplace who give a shit about what the license of the source code no, is. absolutely. And right. so, yeah, you know, and so what you, like that's why by focusing on that, uh, you know, let's let, I'm going to temporarily use like business language and then pivot away from that. But the uh, um, pivot was actually <laughs> pivot example, away from the business language. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to leverage the business language for a moment and then, and then pivot. Um, right. But by, just demonstrate some synergy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by. Um, yeah, but by, by by focusing and designing for that vertical, which is where I was actually going, like you produce something that is better for that experience. You know, so you can imagine, like having um, an experience that is uh, more geared towards that particular like set of interactions and exchanges. You can then imagine integrating GNU Tala, so you have a marketplace currency, and you can settle all the transactions electronically which you know i mean obviously you can do in facebook marketplace but not very easily from facebook group to kind of set you know so integrating those things is hard just having a okay you want to buy three hay bales from me i've got three hay bales um we'll meet here and you, know, you can pay me this now or like at the time and then when i've seen the payment go in uh, you can have your hay bales that is all some stuff that can be done with free software and can make it a better experience now, mm-hmm. where I was going with pivoting away from the business language is a discussion that we had. Um, do you remember when we had the the discussion about the tractors? In, yeah. Uh, the, that was a, yeah, in yeah. Brussels. So that was Fosdem. Yeah. And then yeah. shortly after that, we went to um, the place, I can't remember where it was, middle of Sweden, with the events of it, and we did the hackathon. Oh, that. yeah, that was in uh, Rostung. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the thing that we talked about, uh, one of the things we talked about at the museum was the idea that you have to encode values into your software that are incompatible with the values the big business has. Um, and mm-hmm. what big business has done successfully is encode its values into the open source movement. So we get the you should share via GitHub, which is just a Microsoft telemetry engine. We we get the, you should keep your GitHub profile busy, and that's how we'll know which developers to hire, so that we generate all of this like free labor uh, for these large companies. You get the um, contributor licensing agreements, which means it doesn't matter whether it's free software, because at any moment, the corporation can change the licensing terms, and you have agreed that they're allowed to do that, even though... Uh, you know, you contributed to the software as an independent author who wasn't employed by them. Like, you know, they have successfully put their values into this community. And what mm-hmm. we have to do is <laughs> nice tweet. Um, 
<laughs> that just came up on my watch while I was uh, oh, gesticulating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, for those of you that aren't following, I just uh, oh to Graham that GitHub is a Microsoft telemetry engine. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so what we talked about was the fact that yeah, you know, we have to put values into our software that makes it undesirable for the um you know for the large corporations to use or just like so incompatible with their way of working that they can't work out how to use it and then they'll yep. leave us alone you know i think about uh, so a media gamer 1200 brought up the uh, the stink over the win the whatsapp um content licensing changes that made a load of people move off to signal and telegram or whatever and then yeah, I want to talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they then sort of, you know, uh, people came back because of network effects. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of the people you know, that I know who are like um, anarchists or co or even like you know cooperatives are on mm -hmm. like Signal um, mm -hmm. and don't use WhatsApp. On the other hand, like some of these organisations, Communist Party of Britain, for example has Zoom and WhatsApp because that's the only thing they can find that all of their members are actually uh, you know capable of uh, of using and they they tried using Jitsi instead of Zoom and found it was too hard to get the meetings going and so you know went back to to Zoom um mm -hmm. i think like making the making those things work is a small part of the battle convincing people that they exist and that they are there to use is a big part of the battle but putting the values in them, not just around the the um, copyright license, but the you know the user experience, the design, the um, mm -hmm. the way that data is stored and shared, and uh, you know, and the the uh, ways in which you interact with it, making those a completely different offering from a commercial offering. So getting out of this mindset of we need the free software version of X. Like GNU Step, yes, we absolutely need the free software version of Coco because we need to pr provide the fundamental platform on which you can build your software. But we don't need the free software version of Facebook. We need the we need the thing that supports a non uh, corporate monopolistic community better than Facebook does and better than Facebook ever can, and that happens to be free software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. That's the people don't use Facebook because it's Facebook. They use Facebook because that's where their friends are, first mm. of all. And second, they use Facebook because, well, it's it's easy because everyone already has a Facebook account. Um, and so we don't need the replacement for Facebook. We need the things you're using Facebook for that it's not ideally suited for. We need that thing. Hmm. Um, I, I have two. I have I have uh, an upcoming project which I will uh, I'll, I'll mention because I have this idea. Uh, but I do want to go uh, circle back to Signal. I just said circle back because you mentioned business speak. Hmm. Um, Signal is an interesting one. We have uh, and and you and I use Telegram. We've talked about that, and I use Telegram because uh, it's free enough. Uh, Telegram clients are fully free the protocol is documented but the server software is not free um so you can't run your own telegram server and this when when signal people versus telegram people are arguing the signal people say well our server source code is free but the problem is you can't connect to the signal network if you use a build that isn't signed by the guy who created signal moxie hmm. So it doesn't fucking matter that Signal is open source or free software. It doesn't matter that you have all of the source code to everything unless you're going to spin up a new network that runs on all the Signal technologies that doesn't call itself Signal. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't matter you have access to 100% of the source code uh for Signal. You don't have access to any of the people that are on it. Mm. And you can't have access to those people. Um, I also want to sort of elaborate on the point because I think this is a really Im important one. The the hackathon that Graham mentioned is was for uh, some software for organizing uh, political activities, and I'm not sure it, it's affiliated with, I'll say, uh, Venstre which is the left party in Sweden. Uh, 
I don't know exactly what the relationship is or whatever, so I won't speculate on that. But it is, uh, um, but it is not free software. Uh, and I, I stopped working on it because uh, it, it is mostly volunteers. There are one or two people that get paid to work on it um, as their jobs. And uh, all of the other contributions are, are volunteers. And it's, it's, it's a great community of people. But I decided that I wanted to spend, if I was going to spend my spare time on something, I wanted to spend my spare time on something that was going to be fully free. And the, the person who decided that it was not yet free software said, we don't want the right wing parties using our shit. And somebody who I'm not going to name, but you can feel free to name drop them if you feel it's appropriate, Graham. Hmm. Uh, somebody who was there also from the UK said, uh, but if we do our job right with this platform, the right wing parties won't use it because we've embedded our values into this software and their values don't align with ours. So they won't use this software because it doesn't meet their needs. If we build software for organizing individuals in community groups, then the right wing parties won't use that software because they don't give a shit about individual uh, individual community groups. They only care about businesses. Mm. So you, like a business centric login for those people, they're not going to use that kind of stuff. And I think that that was a really key point is that you need to embed your values into that. Uh, you mentioned about the trackers and I want to talk about those too, because I thought, and this is what started this conversation. Uh, and I now actually uh, have a couple of friends who worked on the John Deere stuff a few years ago, John Deere started John Deere Cloud. And when you buy a John Deere tractor, your tractor is up uploading data about your fields, the soil measurements, uh, soil density reports, and things like that, to their cloud. Your neighboring farmers, who might be your competitors, can pay to get the data about your farm. And I said, this is it. Free software is going to win in the farms mm. because farmers will not put up with this shit. And it's true. In all of the farming magazines and people who are enthusiastic about tractors, sales went up for two things. Old tractors and Ukrainian hacked firmware for John <laughs> Deere tractors. Uh, but it really didn't change the thing. John Deere has, uh, continues to have record years because of their uh, software rental. Um, and now you're kind of locked in. You have to pay for John Deere Cloud in order to be able to lock your data from your neighbor getting it. Yeah. Um, or, or probably not your neighbor, but you know, competing farms in your market. Um, and I thought that, you know, oh, John Deere has finally just turned the screw one turn too far. And it turns out that in the grand scheme of things, nobody gives a fuck. Hmm. The people who are buying brand new tractors just see this now as the cost of doing business, as the new normal. And it's it's uh, it, it was really disappointing to me that um, that, that happened. Yeah, um, all of this has been done through turning the screws. There's a really book, good book called um, The Rise of surveillance capitalism by shoot is it Zhubov or something like that let me have a look um no i won't use that window <laughs> i was about to uh look this up in the window that's currently showing your face that's okay. not the way to... um the rise of surveillance capitalism by mark weinstein that doesn't sound right Mark Zuboff. Zuboff, you that's said, the word. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Said, yeah, I said Zuboff or something. But yeah, Mark Zuboff. Good. Um, mm -hmm. That book talks about like you know what Google did to get Street View. Like Street View is a massive privacy invasion, right? Like you know there there are cars with cameras pointing all you know all around, just like driving around taking photos through your living room windows. Uh, I think they're still not allowed in Germany, actually. Um, but, you know, many places there are. And what they did was they, like, drove around a town and everyone went, whoa, what's that weird thing? Okay, creepy thing with cameras. Then, like, Google went, okay, we apologise. We're not going to do this every week. We'll scale back to once every month. And then, you know, everyone went, well, thank you. Yeah, we have won. We have won a concession. You have gone from not doing this at all to doing it once a month. 
and they've and you know and they kept doing that you, you push too far and then you push back from the place that was too far to the middle ground but you've yeah. moved the middle ground from what was normal you know that, what was the, normal uh, is now the uh, an extreme like luddite position so this this was described to me years ago uh when i was having a discussion with two friends who were on opposing political parties in mm. pei and uh my leftish friend called it the right ratchet right yeah they they, they talk he, about that in the states particularly yeah so he 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 described this as a bad thing and as he was describing it as a bad thing his opponent was describing it as a completely good thing. Mm. And one of the things that happened was um, taxes got lowered by 2%, I think. They lowered, I think they lowered the GST from 7% to 5% under Stephen Harper in Canada. And of course, as a leftist, I said, how are we going to pay for this tax cut? Mm. Um, and my, uh, my, my left-leaning friend said, well, this is the right ratchet. This is this is what it is, and 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 my my right my right leaning friend said, yeah, it's great. By lower, you can't raise taxes. You can always lower taxes. Mm. Excuse me, you can always lower taxes, but you can never raise them. And so, by lowering taxes just before an election, you guarantee that the next party is crippled. And if it's you, you get to implement your your policies with less money, which is what your poli mm. which is what your platform is. And so, um, and and so, yeah, and and that's what we're seeing in privacy is this is is this ratcheting effect. Amusingly, there is there are free software versions of of Street View. Um, I, I I participated in this a little bit actually. You can strap a GoPro. They make these really ridiculously sticky suction cups, hmm. and you stick a GoPro on the fender of your car, and you drive down a road, and then you upload the images to um i think it's called open street view actually i can't remember exactly what it's called um and it seems like a massive privacy violation but uh an amusing cultural difference here is if you are in your own house in canada and the uh the blinds are open and people can see in your window and you walk by the window naked you can be charged with public indecent exposure by walking by. And yeah, we're, I'm not even talking about like waggling your dick at, at, at like no, passers no. by. A... You can in the UK as well. About... In fact, there have, been, there's, okay. there have been cases in the UK where someone has broken into someone's house and the homeowner has been naked and the homeowner has been charged with indecent exposure. Oh, that's fucked. By, by so, the burglar. So <laughs> in, 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 in Canada, the cultural thing is when somebody has their blinds open, you look in the window and you inspect, you, mm. you, you look, uh, you inspect the junk, right? You look at their junk. Yeah. Uh, in Sweden, the cultural difference is, is, is very different. And I had a, a South African friend who married a Swedish woman explain this to me. Uh, he said he was walk when he first moved to Sweden, he first encountered this. He was walking down the street and he looked in a window that was open because all the windows are open and blinds are not necessarily closed in Sweden. And he said he saw a chandelier and he said, oh, well, that's a really interesting chandelier they have, you know, a really interesting light fixture. And he told and, and he said to his wife, he said, hey, look at that. That's really cool. And she said, no, I'm not invading their privacy by looking in the window. Um, now, they say that's the cultural thing, but I can tell you when my blinds are up at the house down south and it's a very heavy walking traffic place, people are walking by and staring at my TV while they walk by um, and staring in my house. But it is a very much a, but there is a cultural difference between if I look in your window, what I see is my problem. Mm. And in Canada, if I look in your window, what I see is your problem for showing it to me. Mm. And that, that was sort of a cultural difference that I found very interesting. Um, and I think that Street View is definitely a massive imposition of your privacy, but it's probably the least invasive thing that Google does. <laughs> oh but yeah i mean it certainly is now because this stuff is like you know is invisible online and so uh you know all of the practices they've done in you know improving uh like online tracking and ad delivery have been similarly incremental but like completely invisible to you know almost everybody unless you are like the the eff and the reverse engineering their javascript right Right. It, it's completely, 
so, so as as our privacy and our and 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 security is is sort of eroded, it's it it becomes harder to 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 claim that back. Yeah, and uh, look, so you know, other example of the ratchet is look how Apple claimed to be the friends of privacy. What they mean is we take a load of data from you, we keep it ourselves, and thus we are you know, uh, and thus we are your friends because everybody else. Uh, you know, sells insights based on it for profit. What we do is yeah. sell products based on it for profit. Right. Matthew Scala says when he was in Denmark, there was a couple who got in trouble for having sex while leaning out their window, but only because they were too loud. That's about the most Danish thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... Uh, it's it, it's completely. I mean, in the UK, you've had CCTV for a long time. Well, I think we um, are the market leaders in CCTV. And in Sweden, um, you have to post a sign when there are cameras at all, hmm. and there are very strict rules about where you can point your camera. So I, I have cameras around my property up north, and they definitely. Well, they definitely. You can definitely see my neighbor's house, their driveway from through my camera which is wildly against the law in sweden if they complain um but i think they're they are not permanent residents here so they i think they're actually happy to have their house being no, i mean it's true in the the uk as well there are there are rules but what you have to realize in the uk is particularly in urban uk is what you think of as public space is actually privately owned by someone like you know, particularly city of london you can be you know you you can walk down the street and be covered by tons and tons of cameras because you're going through the you know through the lobby of a public building or through the lobby of a private building and its land its highway boundary is actually at the edge of the road not at the edge of the pavement so you've walked across their you know you've walked across their land and they're allowed to have a camera there and you know you can like walk decent lengths of you know, major streets in London, major pedestrian routes, without actually ever encountering any public property. Yeah, in in Sweden it's a little bit different. In fact, uh, so my my property here up north is split into four sections, and two of the sections are what I sort of consider the main property, and the public property runs actually through the middle of my barn. Hmm. I I only own about three quarters of the land that my barn is built across because there's a public space that goes diagonally through my barn. Um, now that doesn't mean that anybody can walk into my barn, but actually in Sweden, anybody can walk across my lawn and I can't tell them not to. Um, in, 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 uh, in Canada, it's almost, uh, <laughs> there was a thing that hit the papers in Canada around 2012 uh, it was probably Alberta had legalized firing a warning shot. <laughs> if somebody steps onto your property, you are allowed one non-fatal warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say non-fatal, you mean like kneecaps. <laughs> right. Right. They won't and... do it again. <laughs> right. Yeah, but then you've got somebody stuck on your property. <laughs> Well, and they're, then they're squatters, <laughs> right? So, actually, in Sweden, uh, we 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 still have. I, re I I understand that you claim to have the right to roam in the UK, but there's just no public land to roam. The the you're not really able to do that anymore, thanks to people like Jeremy Clarkson, as I understand it. Um, yeah, there's there, there there is currently um, we're we're in the last. It, it's complicated. It's not worth going into. Um, the, yes, we have the right to roam, uh, but that's only over like public space, and most spaces are being enclosed. Um, oh, okay, in, in Sweden, we still have right to roam there, and there are rules about this. So I own enough property in Sweden that somebody could uh, pitch a tent on the field that I own across the street hmm. uh, and stay there. I think for forty-eight hours, right. as long as they are not disrupting and as long as they clean up after themselves um and so we still have that here but it's it, it's um it, it, i i think that's slowly going to erode now too and i mean we don't even have a government today so who knows um 
who knows what's going to happen in Sweden soon. I'm really glad that I moved to the fucking woods. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, it's so, so back to sort of the original point, I think that, you know, we, we spent a lot of effort on copyleft and, and, and free software and we won. Hmm. We, if, if you, if I were to have a, if I had a time machine and I went back to 1998 and talked to younger Steven and said, all of, you know, there's an, there's a free software web browser. You can download the source code to a web browser and compile it on your own computer and run it. And it will view almost, you know, the entire internet, except for, you know, only Chrome sites, which is unfortunately too many. But you, uh, but also Chromium is an open source browser that you can download all the source code to and view all the Chrome websites. Ah, that, that, uh, there you go. That's a good point. If 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 I had like basically I had, browsers are all open source. Yes, Edge is, Edge is yep. open source. Yep, Chrome is yeah. open source. And so, Safari is and, open and, source. In 1998, all we want the only missing piece to the puzzle was hmm. the web browser. And in in 2020, it doesn't matter. We have all of the source code to all of the things, and nobody. And everyone is you. The the thing is, in 1998, and and for you know the decade that followed, ish, uh, you know we we saw computers as a thing you owned and you ran software on. Mm. But now you don't run software on your own computer anymore. Um, the only in 1998, the only closed source program that I ran, uh, that wasn't a web browser. And most of the time I used Amaya, so I was using a free software web browser most of the time. Um, the only non-free software that I ran that wasn't a web browser was the Windows program that was my online banking. Because then you did your online banking by dialing your modem to the bank's computer and running a Windows program. And now I do that all through a web browser. And actually, thanks to the uh, PSD2 uh, legislation in Europe, uh, I can actually write an application that does a, a free software application that does all of my online banking for me, too. Hmm. I just can't authenticate to it without using a non free software. Um, and so we've won the free software fight, but the, the, the battleground has changed. Yeah. And I, I, I really, really like your suggestion of moving. Let's try to let's try to move small groups of people to better platforms. I think that's a fantastic way to move forward. Hmm. Um, and it's it's a thing that I can do, and it's a thing we can all do. But I'm not sure that that that's going to be sufficient, especially with sort of, you know, cars that phone home to find out if they need an oil change. My, my, uh, cars that are, that are shipped now, you pay a subscription fee to the company that made your car to find out when you need an oil change. My tractor from 1963, 1966 has a light on the dash that lights up when it needs the oil changed. But cars today phone home to a clown service, and so it's it's completely nuts. Yeah, but this this idea of like sufficiency is one that is a a moving goalpost, and b you know almost certainly unachievable. It's like you know do which is uh, you know, is it sufficient to get people to consider buying their groceries from a local cooperative instead of a um, a, a, like massive supermarket if you are an anti-capitalist well it depends on what your definition of sufficiency is if, if you mean is it sufficient to bring down the entire system and uh, like you know turn us all into an argo syndicate then no it isn't you know it, is it sufficient to show some people that there's another way and then they teach their children and their children teach their children and then you know, in a few generations time 10 percent of people are buying food from a cooperative instead of from a supermarket mm -hmm. then yes it is sufficient when I when I lived on PEI, there was a in I, I lived in a small city called the the smaller of the two cities called Summerside, and they have the Summerside Farmers Market, uh, which runs every Saturday morning. And if you are ever in Summerside, you should definitely go there. You can get everything from bacon to beer. Um, and I 
I used to, we used to buy all of our groceries from, from the farmer's market. Uh, nearly everything. I mean, there were obviously a few things. You can't get bananas and you can't get avocados, for instance, uh, from the farmer's market in Summerside. But we got all nearly all of our food from the farmer's market. And we told everyone else, you should also get your food from the farmer's market. And so there's, and that was a more positive contribution to life in that city and on that island than the years, than the, the hours that I spent over the years trying to teach people about the cleansing power of free software. Mm. Um, because all of the software is free now or could be free. Um, you know, you use people use Slack. They could just as easily use Mattermost. Um, and I think it's actually a better product uh, and things like that. So I think that, I just heard a Slack tone as soon as I said Slack. <laughs> um, and it's, we now have free software for everything and it's just not good enough. We now need the ability to do with our things, whatever the fuck we want. And that's, that's the change that I hope to uh, see in the world. Should we do some coding? We should. Cool. So what we decided last time, which was probably two weeks ago because we didn't uh, have an episode last week, was um, that our first task was going to be to make the uh, Simple Agenda web services thing on our HTTP redirects. Because mm -hmm. then we can point out the dot well known address for Canada and it will like follow that to get to the actual location from where we can discover the calendar. Um so we should do that. Mm -hmm. And I think we were very careful to make notes. Yeah. Last time as well. Now, when I get a... My computer makes so many different beeps, I have no idea which window the notification is coming from. Where did we put that? I think we called it plan.org. Oh, yeah. We we'll probably put it in web tab. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, okay, so follow 30x redirects. I would not be surprised to learn that um, the framework can already do this for us. We just need to set some, like, you know, some property on a URL session configuration or something. I I would also not be surprised by that. So hmm. let's take a let's look. Just move the chat down here. Right. So what are we? There is a already a class web dev resource that does the requests. Mm hmm. And it was called. I can't remember, but it's towards it. It's towards the end of the file, as I recall. So this request is request. There it is nice. And it's using. Okay, so it's using NSURL handle. Ah, and it, it is, is already perfect. checking for the redirection. Wait a minute. It looks like it already does this. Yeah. Now, did, okay, so did we actually get a 301 or a 302 redirect? It's possible that we got a 200 and we got the redirect in the body. Let's have a... So we, we wrote down... Uh, most of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but only the XML stuff, not the... Right. The thing. current user principal response should be what we get when we... I think. No, that was the thing that we got once we had followed the redirect. Right. So then... Because we, we uh... made that 
query. So what we want to do is um, is that yes. Only not redirect it to oh, and we're also in the wrong path for that. Okay. Oops. And that's using the well-known URL, which we which, which, is want, we, which is what we want to do. Okay. So this says three hundred one move permanently. Now there's a way to make curl print the actual response headers as well. Something like dump headers. Yeah. Okay, so we did get a 301. Okay, so we did get a 301, but I do not... Oh, and there's the location. Ah, right. And it redirects us to remote PHP dev, which is not the location of the calendar. It's the location of the calendar list. Right, but what we... Okay, so is it the case that... Can it, uh, sorry, that Simple Agenda is already following that um following that redirect but not but it, but it's still yeah. not the place where it wants to be yeah. right so how do we read these ns debug ml log messages because that's not a macro i'm familiar with i am also not familiar with that one let me type it into a web browser Okay, so it is. Oh, you know what? We should do this on the other one. If you type ns debug ml log into Firefox, it gives the link to the documentation right away. It is the exception handling one. Uh, go back one. The next one, I got slightly different answers, probably right there. It's in here somewhere. Uh, uh, you've, oh, it's lagging for me if you want to search for in a log. There we go. Okay, so it's got a log level. Oh, okay, it, in, it's the same as NS debug L log. Uh, oh, and includes the call from the from the includes information from the message. Which method the logging call was made in? Okay. Where does it store those logs? Well, or do we just need to run it in? Does it put them on standard out? This message, right? Debug log is enabled. By default, to turn them off, set the diagnosis in equals no, which we don't do. Uh, we presumably don't do that either. Uh, message will only actually be logged if this key is in the set of active debug categories maintained by the NS process info object for the application. Normally this list is empty. Okay, so you can put GNU debug equals key. And we need to know the name of the key. Uh, which is DFLT. Okay. So if we run simple agenda with that, it will tell us it's following the redirect. Oops, wrong one. I went to preferences. Uh, we have the cat.
that. Oh. Oh. Oh, it put in some new lines? Yeah. No, it has. Oh, uh, okay. It has, it's it just yeah. scrolled okay. across. It doesn't look like it has. It's... Okay. Uh, oh, that's the name of the calendar, not the URL. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, well, there we go. And now if you hit check directories... That will tell us. It didn't evidently actually tell us anything. I wonder if there's a if it's changing the key in simple agenda somehow, the log key. Right. Uh, what was the name of that method? Uh, uh, this request method. Yeah. And the HTTP status was the yeah. There we go. Nice to go to log. Oh, it could be this web dev resource. That could be the. Is that the key? Yeah. Okay. Is that, but that doesn't match what's here. It's level format args. Yeah. And it should, ah, okay, that, that is wrong. That should be key. Because this is NS, equivalent to NS debug L log, which is not the one above it, which is what I read, which says with key DFLT, but is actually equivalent okay, so to that one. Okay. Yeah. Now, so that will be generated from it looks like it's an info page a new info page we can we can fix that but we want we want okay. what we want to do is uh, uh web dev resource And we get far less noise in the which is nice yeah all right right so that's just the name yeah redirection okay okay and so it's doing the prop find on the dab so okay so we don't need to follow redirect so that item in our to-do list is done well that... I feel like we've made good progress. So uh, please like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, um, what do I do? Not that. What's the thing for marking a an item as done in? I don't know actually. I can't remember. Writing done. There we go. Okay, so ah, the there next we go. Thing... Oh, uh -huh. Control C, Control T. Okay, so the next thing is going from the well known URI, which requires me to do some DNS setup. So let's not do that one. Uh, get the calendar home set, I think. No, is the... it doesn't, because we got to that before. Oh, from the URI. Yeah, sorry. That's the last item that I that needs me to do DNS. Yeah. We've, we've kind of only got 15 minutes left on the stream, so do we want to like quickly it's... pivot into fixing the documentation? Yeah, uh, let's do we'll that. probably achieve in let's... 15 minutes. That... I think that that's a, a, a useful thing that we can open a pull request on. Yeah, so let's just close that. And uh, th so this is in documentation base programming manual. So libs base 
uh, documentation. Or um, manual, I would have thought. Nope. Base library. Uh, exception handling. Exception handling, mm -hmm. right. Okay. So yep. let's. Will you stop? Why does it keep saying tags there? I don't want to say tags. Oh, it's a plan. Uh, switch to the mini buffer with Control XO. Yeah. And then uh, Control G. That's better. There we go. Right. Uh, so we want to load that. Uh, libs base documentation manual. Exception handling dot techie and as debug ml log that one. And I'm guessing this one as well. Uh yeah, I I think so. Yeah. Well, okay. Mm. That was quicker than I was expecting. Okay, do you have Maggot installed on this? Um, is that default? It is not default. It's a package. Oh, I just pressed. Oh, I've done a thing where I've broken the. Oh shit! Um, oh. Shift control. Ah, uh, Meta X doesn't work. I'm just gonna revert everything. We have this problem on the other. Ah, luckily I had saved since before I found Aha, out. okay, nice. perfect. So your right. question was Git. Uh, yeah, there's a, a maggot, M A G I T, but you probably don't have it if, it, if it's a package. No. Okay. All right, it's it's awesome, but we can do it from the command line. Oh, or you can install it. Uh, package list packages. That's what it was. I was thinking package show package list. And search for maggot. Yeah. Oh, it's in a it's in Melpa. You'd have to add the Melpa repo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's figure right. that. Let's do it from the command line. I guess we need a branch. Yeah. Well, let's um make sure how to say. Nice. All right. We also need a fork, won't we? Oh, right. Yep. Uh, remote V. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we've only got the origin. Okay. Um... What do well? Do we want to make the documentation first? Oh, I don't have tech. Uh, you can apt install tech live. Uh, okay, right. I was hoping there'd be a smaller package than tech live. Oh, um, uh, is there a tech info package? Uh, ah, oh, there is a tech info package. Yep. Yeah. It's just tech info. But okay. you probably need all of LaTeX as well. And you already have tech info installed. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. I was hoping we could just get something like techie to HTML. Maybe. Oh, all right. Well, let's get both. Hunter 2? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my password is asterisk, 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 asterisk. That way, I don't need a password reminder because it always shows up when I'm typing in. Right. Oh, your internet's pretty fast. Weirdly, that internet is fast, and like your video keeps um, pausing, and 
OBS swears that it's streaming at zero KBs per sec at the moment. <laughs> Even though the audio is absolutely fine over Jitsi. And this thing is going fine. Uh, but your upload speed is probably shit. Yeah. Need to get you some of that sweet, sweet fiber. I need to get me some of that sweet, sweet different ISP. I think, yeah, the, the, like in the States, the ISPs have all gone. Nobody expects to have good upload, therefore we'll just all like reduce our upload rate. Yeah. I worked for a couple of small ISPs in the late 90s. Um, you know, people who were forward thinking started dial up ISPs. Hmm. And then they got bought by one of two companies. There are effectively two ISPs in all of Canada now. Yeah. Um, where, wherever you live, you can choose the cable company or the phone company. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the people who owned the dial up ISP and sold to one of the cable or phone company, you know, for a million dollars or whatever in 1998 became local tech uh, gods, basically. Hmm. Index HTML. Oh, okay. That was weird. Okay, I don't have an app for that. You can just type Firefox index HTML too, or that. That? Oh, oh, that is not a generated HTML. That is the 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 one that. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, I was expecting it to. Have... It's created GS base dot PDF. I think. Okay. Could probably just search that for NS. Oh, you've already got it. Look at that. All right, and our fixes are in place. All right. So we need a fork. Yeah. I might have already forked this at some point in the past. Oh, don't do this. <laughs> you know, we we, even, we we got a late start, and we went down a a, a road that didn't matter, and we still <laughs> managed to get a pull request, or are managing to get a pull request in on the documentation. So that is a that's a successful day. Yeah. Yeah, overall, we've had a, a pretty good stream. Um, what was it doing? Fork. Already forked it, right. Okay, well, in that case, I don't care. I'll just go to that fork. I hope there's a button to update the fork easily. There probably is, but... Um, Fetch upstream, Fetch there it is. Yeah. Fetch and merge. There we go. You can also do it in the the local one, but you, yeah, you, you are right that it is better that we don't have to. Yeah, remote add fork. That that looks right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Status diff. That's our diff. That's what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want to commit all. We just want to commit that one file so you can add that file, I guess. Yeah, but it was, it, it, because the other ones were new files, they wouldn't have got stayed. Ah, okay. Didn't get all right. Hey, anyway, but you're right. Um, Oh, 
We got a typo in there. Where's that? Uh, NS Debo. Oh, no, you put a dot in because. Okay, yeah, well. NS Debug motherfucking L log. <laughs> uh, and now I want to do the thing. Is it like set author or something? I think it's just author. Stephen at SR, Stephen R. Baker .com, right? Yep. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so I actually need to um, configure. We apparently haven't done this before. Ah. Yeah, okay, so the, the author is correct, but I expect the committer is incorrect. Oh, ah, well, fuck it. Then you can just set committer. Uh, you probably won't commit amend committer. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, nope, not. Hmm. Interesting. No, well, forget it. We'll just push. It's not a big deal. All right. Yes, I'm sure that is correct. Um. Oh, your SSH key is not added. <sighs> ah, ah. I don't have one. Oh yeah, okay. We have done this before. We use HTTPS. Ah, right. Right, talk amongst yourselves, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I'm sure everyone in this room has seen this before. Mm. Oh, I'm catching up on chat. AmiGamer1200 says OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap Open Street does the maps. I'm not sure if OpenStreetMap has the street view, though. I thought OpenStreetView was a separate thing, but maybe they've integrated since I last looked at it. And when I go to Open Street View, it shows me an airport. Oh, the airport that I was looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered the, um, I put in the pre-order because it, it they're delayed on the rudder section for my plane, for my kit plane. And so I was looking at airports. That's an excellent message. Good. Well, let's roll with it then. Yeah, so now it's you and some anonymous committer. I don't care. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah, and with one minute to go on the stream clock. So uh, it was that a was good amazing. job we had to fuck about with the SSH key and... Kill a bit of runtime. 
Yeah, well, you know, there's uh, uh, silver linings and all. Yeah, and also, you know, I feel good that, one, we've learned a bit more about the code for um, Simple Agenda because we've worked out how it handles HTTP redirects, which we weren't sure whether it did. And we know it's doing it in the application. We know it's using the NSURL handled networking code, which is a very old way of doing Coco networking, which you know we probably don't need to change anytime soon. Um, but you know it's good to know if we do need to like do weird things like um, uh, there there are probably things like caching that are done better in an SURL session that we are not yet taking advantage of, and we have been good citizens and cleaned up when we saw a documentation problem that actually confused us. And that, yeah, and that is, uh, uh, this is a thing that I always like to do, um, because I, I'm, I, I am old school enough that I like to rely on the documentation, especially the documentation in GNU Step is quite good, hmm. and so we've just made it a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the, you know, you can definitely get by with the GNU Step documentation standalone, like you don't need to refer to the uh, Apple Docs. And in fact, like that's harder to do now that they tend to be written Swift first. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Well, that's great. I think that was successful. Sorry for the late start. That was my fault. But my uh, starting next month, oh, I guess uh, your your schedule may change and my, my schedule improves in the evenings next starting next month as well. Well, my schedule in the evenings this week is completely wide open because I've been self-isolating. I don't have the Rona, uh, but I got contact traced by our uh, flawless um, UK government telemetry engine. Well, and that's uh, because someone saw you on the CCTV being near somebody next that had the Rona. Mm, exactly. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> I've spent the last uh, week indoors tomorrow night i am also indoors and then i have my freedom on thursday and i'll probably walk to the shops or something exciting like that <laughs> you should go to the pub you you're, you're getting behind on your 128 pints yeah absolutely well it sounds like everybody else in warwick was in the pub next door for the um, england germany game and had had the 128 pints i didn't know england and germany both had hockey teams uh sorry the football game Oh, that's not a real sport. doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> right. Please uh, make sure that the next key responder is the like button. And, um, oh, you're getting good at this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, definitely uh, let's have an, uh, uh, an NS mouse down event on the subscribe button. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're you're really good at this. <laughs> send, send a message to my Patreon. Oh yeah, you your Patreon. I think my Patreon is live as well. Oh okay. Do you want I to give your mention, URL? Oh, mine is patreon.com slash sr baker. Um, mine is I think it slash the, I am Lee G. I think I just clicked the create button because I got tired of sitting on the profile. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, Patreon is another one of those things that maybe we should talk about in a future stream when we we are talking about these kinds of things it was on my list of things to cover because it is again one of those closed platforms that people do a lot of open things on yeah indeed uh much like Ooh. github okay well thank you everyone uh thank you for thank you. everyone who joined in in the chat thank you to uh, greg and everyone who created canoe step so that we could um you know, correct it for you <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for this week and uh, we'll see you next week See you all again. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.